desk. President Abraham Lincoln looms large in our nation's history, and for that very reason, many states lay claim to Lincoln as part of their own history. As Sophia Salaby explains, Abraham Lincoln might have been more of a Hoosier than a lot of people realize. I'm at the Lincoln Boyhood National Memorial in Spencer County, Indiana, a park that commemorates our 16th president's time growing up in the Hoosier State from ages 7 to 21. A log cabin, a smokehouse, and a living farm can all be found at the National Memorial, all in an effort to recreate the kind of life our 16th president lived for 14 years of his life. This is an area where we talk about the pioneer life of Abraham Lincoln, his early years in Indiana. Abraham Lincoln's family moved here to Spencer County in 1816, just as Indiana was becoming a state. Indiana State Museum curator Dale Ogden says Lincoln's story is like many pioneers of the time, who regularly packed up their belongings and moved just to survive. It was a difficult life um, trying to eke out a living on the, on the frontier, and Indiana was the American frontier um, during the time that the Lincolns lived in the state. But Lincoln's Indiana heritage isn't always discussed as a big part of the president's life. While Kentucky is known as the birthplace of Lincoln and Illinois calls itself the land of Lincoln, Indiana chose the moniker Lincoln's boyhood home, a name that isn't always clear. The 14 years that he spent in Indiana, you, uh, you can say Lincoln boyhood home, but what does that mean? Does it mean he lived here for two years? Does it mean he lived here for 20 years? Um, did he come when he was two? Did he come when he was 15? To add to the confusion, not a lot remains to link Abraham Lincoln to his time in Indiana. On the frontier, pioneers like the Lincolns would have used tools until they were no longer usable or even refashioned them into something else. What is left is few and far between. Like several cabinets built by Abraham's father, Thomas, and a bench mallet that once belonged to the president. He just repositioned the handle, cut the handle down, repositioned it, and put it into the groove and made a, a, a mallet out of it for driving pegs, which is essentially what he did for his father, who was a master carpenter. Megan Fernandez grew up in southern Indiana and is one of Lincoln's closest living relatives. Her great-great-great-great-great-grandfather was Josiah Lincoln, uncle to Abraham, making the president her first cousin seven times removed. We knew, and my mom's family is named Lincoln, so I had a grandma Lincoln, and you know, that was the name of my cousins and my uncles. So there was always very present, but it wasn't something we talked about very much. Sometimes it's hard for her to feel connected to her distant relative because of a lack of documentation about the time period. But Fernandez remembers one moment when she visited the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum in Springfield, Illinois, and saw a statue of Lincoln. She saw her family's features in his face. This isn't just like that I have a connection to this person. He's one, he's one of my family members. He's not to me, primarily a president of the United States. Here's my cousin right here. Getting people to see Lincoln as a real person rather than a figure in our country's history is all a part of Cap's job at the National Memorial. He thinks more efforts to educate the public about Lincoln's life in Indiana will help people embrace him as part of the state's history. What we try to, to do here is get people to think of him in, in different terms, personalize him a little bit, think of him as a young boy, and to, to learn about these experiences that he was having and to help them kind of understand how those experiences shaped him. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Sophia Salaby.